Wild end of the 500. Ryan hunter Ray from Florida, Ed Carpenter from Indiana, Townsend Bell from California. One, two, and three, coming back up to speed. Tell three wide going into one was not going to work. Three wide around here in an Indy car does not work ever. Uh, uh, sorry. Nah, I'm sorry. It was busy down there. I suspect they'll have words with each other. Yeah, three wide, look like. Yeah. Three wide, stop the bell, speed that is you. And Hinchcliffe just came from that concussion he had in the inaugural Grand Prix. I don't think anybody's really to blame in that. You have to go for these restarts. And we could see that every time we restart from here to the end of the race. Now, well, Ed Carpenter, James Hinchcliffe, and to their outside, Elio Castro Nevis. Check that Townsend Bell and then turn where it went wrong. And amazingly, Townsend Bell made it through. And this is when the spotters will be telling him somebody's high, somebody's outside, outside, inside, out. Hang on, bud. hang on. See, now with Ed Spotter, who told him that he was on the outside, last minute Hinchcliffe came on the inside. But as a driver, you also feel what's going on. Now, we ride along with Elio Castroneves. You can see all the cars fan out. And to the surprise, there goes Hinchcliffe. A little bit bold. Go high. And Hinchcliffe makes the right decision to go to the bottom. But the one who really put the pressure on the two inside cars was Townsend Bell that had just a half a foot advantage to press them down on the lower part of the track and then they, they touched. And on the onboard look we had from Castro Nevis's car, I, I believe it was, we actually saw Townsend Bell and Carpenter make the slightest bit of contact before Carpenter and Hinchcliffe bounced off each other. And that forced Carpenter down just enough to connect with Hinchcliffe. And, and in one fell swoop, Townsend Bell uh, how do you say this? Removed two competitors that were behind him. It was a great move. Both of them right now are just seething when they're spinning. Look at this. Little bump, and I'm going to go around the outside. And that little bump that you feel makes you go towards the inside a bit more, plus a spotter telling him that he's got somebody in the high side, drives into the low side to make that contact with James Hinchcliffe. Jamie, you have more? Well, Eddie, your assessment was very nice, shall we say, compared to Ed Carpenter's radio. Ed said, who was that? His team said it was Townsend Bell, and they had some words about it. Very frustrated. Obviously, the two drivers involved, Hinchcliffe and Ed Carpenter, having words. Very frustrated. Both felt like they had cars to win this race today, and now their days are done with 23 laps to go. But you really can't blame Townsend Bell for trying that move. Well, the Californian finds himself up to second right now. Did he lose it down low? Ah, he went, dove in underneath, made it three wide, just in, and you had position on him. Oh, shit, that was three wide. <laughs> yep, that was three wide. It's a good move. No, no caution flags through 149 laps today. And now a little rash of yellow fever has broken out. The intensity is picking up as we get closer to the 500-mile mark at Indianapolis. We're back to the Brickyard after this from your ABC station. Well, while they get ready to stop the field here and continue to clean up, let's back up one caution and check with Vince. Ed Carpenter had one of the fastest cars all day, but got caught in that sandwich going into turn one. What was your perspective of what happened? This guy is not really realizing how much time we had left in the race. You know, it wasn't that wasn't a green-white checkered restart situation. Just you know, amateur moves. Did you feel like it was uh, from the outside or from the inside? 
Uh, I, Townsend and I would have been fine, you know. You know, when, the, the moment when Hinch decided to make it three wide, I think, is when when it was more than any of us could handle. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you just can't stick it in there. It's just a dumb move. Now they put you both in the back of the emergency vehicle on the way to come here. What was the conversation between the two of you on the ride to the medical center? I'll just say it's a good thing he already had a concussion last week. I was nice. Ed Carpenter. disappointment for Ed Carpenter who thought he had a chance to win the race he wants to win more than any other. He did have a chance. He had a very big chance. Down to pit lane and Jamie. Well, nobody knows more about broken hearts. Than with James Hinchcliffe was involved in that uh, accident with Ed Carpenter. Hinch, Ed pointed the finger at you. How did you see it as you entered one? I mean, I was the last guy on the scene, so I guess that's pretty fair. Uh, you know, I, I, from where I was, you know, <laughs> could have been the last restart. It's the last stint for sure. And, uh, you know, you got to go for it. And Ed pulled out. There's a car with there. And I went for it. And Ed gave me the room initially. I, I honestly don't think Townsend knew we were three wide because, again, I haven't seen the replay yet. But from what I saw, Townsend came down into Ed, who came down into me. But like I said, I, I was the last guy there. So I got to take a portion of the blame for sure. And um, I feel bad for Ed. You know, I. I honestly didn't think Townsend could. I knew he had popped out. I honestly didn't think he was going to try and hold the outside because you just, you can't do that here. Uh, for as high as Ed was entering, I knew that Townsend would have been way up in the gray. I thought he was just going to lift and it was going to be Ed and I in the corner. But, uh, you know, obviously that's not how it played out. Townsend kept his foot in it and, and turned into Ed and, and hit me. Partly my fault, maybe partly Townsend's fault. 100% not Ed's fault, and I feel really bad for him. You know, it's uh, he had a great month and was doing a great job. and. I mean, I, I'm gutted for the guys because, you know, we, we weren't great in that sort of middle part of the race and we fought back, got the car where it needed to be, and uh, feel bad for the Andretti Autosport guys. Thanks, Hinch. A.B.? 